Britton Clenet, and welcome to China Insight, where we discuss the latest issues affecting this rapidly changing country. Well, you may or may not have heard of a process in China where women who have just given birth spend a month in confinement. Well, demand for confinement nurses is so high that in many cases they're earning more than doctors. But why is the confinement industry so lucrative? And where did this cultural idea of confinement come from, anyway? Well, today I'm joined by Dominic Johnson Hall, an entrepreneur and longtime Beijinger. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Nice to be here, Britt. Now you have some experience with the confinement procedure. Can you tell me a little bit about it and, and how you came into contact with it? Well, first of all, confinement is a, it's quite a strong word, isn't it? I think uh, it, it makes it sound very negative, but it can right. be a very positive thing for a lot of. Um, uh, Chinese women who have just given birth. Now, I don't know all the history behind it. All I can talk from is the experience is that um, my first wife um, is Chinese and uh, we had our daughter in Shanghai. Um, so certainly had some experiences with, well, the cultural differences between, first of all, giving birth in England versus giving birth in China and then what you call about care after birth. A lot of women um, believe um, that you can really uh, solve a lot of your health problems in that month after birth. Um, and so they see it as a very important time, you know, to rest, um, take care of yourself, um, and what they call the man year or the slow month. Mm -hmm. mm. And in many cases, um, you know, it can be taken, you know, to quite extremes. And in other cases, um, I think more, in my experiences, the, you know, the, the further you go into the countryside, actually, the, the more extreme it becomes. Right. Um, and then in the cities, I think it's, it's, it's much more relaxed. Um, but um, it can go as far as not being allowed to watch television. Um, certainly not uh, being allowed to shower. Mm. Um, These are the kind of things you hear about, right? This, yeah. You know, it doesn't sound very hygienic, but how much truth is there to all this? There's a lot of truth to it. Um, you know, there's, there's many reasons for it. Some people say, you know, um, you know certainly from uh, in the countryside where women would have to work outdoors and in the fields after giving birth, the last thing you want to do is get out back into work and you right. would then end up with infections and, right. and could quite often die. Um, so, um, a lot of people say, you know, that the reason for this has come from that sort of uh, history. Mm. Um, but now, as you were just saying, it's becoming quite the business. Mm, you can employ what they call a USR, who is a, what you call a confinement nurse, um, to, who will come in and look after the mother mm. for that month, you know, after birth, uh, cook them special chicken soup, uh, look after them, and make sure they go through all the procedures that they're supposed to um, so they have that slow month, like not washing uh, not watching TV, not going outside, not being in the wind. Um, there's so many different uh, rules and regulations. Um, but it's quite true, they make a lot of money. But this is not a recognized profession as such, at least it wasn't in the time that my first daughter was born. Um, and so salaries can go all over the place. You can, you can find them for 20,000 RMB a month all the way down to two to 3,000 RMB a month. Mm. Um, but they literally come into your home, they set up camp, um, and they take over. Um, and uh, for a lot of... Uh, uh, young Chinese women who have just given birth. This is fantastic um, because they're looked after and uh, they have a very slow month and they get to recover, um, drink fantastic soups and eat fantastic food. Um, and uh, yeah, so it's, it's confinement sounds like a negative uh, sort of word but it's actually it's not a prison sentence it's not a prison sentence yeah mm. okay well I think that introduces us nicely into the industry China Insight spoke to confinement nurses and got their take on where the industry is heading let's take a look the baby care market is booming in China nothing is too expensive for parents eager to ensure their baby's well-being a significant segment of the industry is postnatal care, provided to both mother and baby by specialist nurses, known as Yuasao in Chinese. Demand has exploded in recent years, with a value estimated at over 700 million yuan, or 100 million US dollars, annually. At the same time, incomes for the nurses have been skyrocketing. In most first and second tier cities, they can earn on average 10,000 yuan a month. A profession characterized as much by soaring salaries as by a lack of regulation, 2016 is set to see a restructuring of the industry. <laughs> Miao Li Bo is one of an army of mainly middle-aged women who have found a second career as a postnatal confinement nurse. Like many of her colleagues, 
The 40-year-old comes from a poor, rural background and has the experience of raising children of her own. Having worked as a postnatal nurse in the northeast, she made the move to Beijing, lured by higher earnings available in the capital. She is currently making around 5,000 yuan a month, taking care of two-week-old Xian Mo and her mother Liu Ling. Originally from Jinan, the family moved to Beijing two years ago. Miao is at the beck and call of both mother and baby 24 hours a day. It's not an easy job, late nights and early mornings, no regular sleep and lots of heavy lifting. But for Miao, it offers the opportunity to earn good money doing a job she loves. Uh,起码再说的能,主要是我就是喜欢孩子。while her husband works full-time, Miss Liu has been a stay-at-home mother for four years. The move to Beijing has brought the family the heavier financial burden of high rent prices. Yet they are spending the equivalent of an average Beijing monthly wage on professional mother and baby support. Um, 然后自己身体恢复的快一些然后就只能说最多一两个月就是感觉自己可能自己不会受罪你要是你要不顾人不顾人肯定是月子里自己肯定会腰痛啦会那个哪里胳膊疼啦因为你经常抱孩子会手
After all, during the child's first month on Earth, she, and not the birth mother, is the main point of contact, creating a strong bond and also a lot of pressure. Uh, Back at the training center, former postnatal nurse and head instructor Ms. Zhang is in her element. Having retired from frontline service due to poor health, she now passes on her knowledge to the next generation of nurses. Now we're going to learn how to bathe the baby. Um, it's a number of really complex steps that I've already forgotten, so hopefully I'll do a good job with this. <laughs> so we've turned it around. We have to clean the face first, first the eyes from the inside to the outside. It's a very precise um, way that they, that they wash it. Um, so you've got the eyes and then you've got the face, you're dabbing the face and um, the head, next is the head. For a new mother, a pricier alternative to a nurse is checking into a postnatal confinement center. Better living conditions have changed not only where, but also how women sit the month. While traditionally in China, taking a shower, washing her hair and even brushing her teeth were forbidden to a new mother in the 30 days after giving birth, a fresh understanding of hygiene has changed things. Postnatal services, just like the traditional practices, are undergoing a considerable transformation. When Ms. Zhang joined the profession in 2007, the industry landscape was very different. A divorce had left her as the sole provider for a son studying in Shanghai. But a 600 yuan a month job in Heilongjiang simply could not pay for her son's education. When she heard of an opportunity to earn 2,000 yuan a month as a postnatal nurse in Beijing, she lost no time in heading to the capital. Before going into teaching, her final nursing assignment took her to the home of Yu Jian. The professional relationship lasted for eight months, much longer than the average one to two month stay of a postnatal nurse, and turned into a close friendship that lasts to this day. 我觉得在当时零九年的时候吧，越早也挺多的。但是，呃，我觉得好像离我的那个要求目标可能还差一点。我就是想找特别有经验的，其实有很多公司也给我推荐，呃，有的也干过干过几年的。但是我感觉虽
Under the new guidelines, a star rating system will be introduced, similar to that in the hotel industry. However, the new regulations are not legally binding, so the administration is counting on consumer power to regulate the market.消费者他可能不知道这个本身这个月嫂或者这个机构，它到底好坏。那么呢，我通过呢专业的人员、专业的机构去给他分级。那么呢，消费者只要知道它是一星、二星、三星、四星、五星，或者是一A、二A、三A
instinctively knew how to do it. I made a few mistakes along the way, um, but they're all healthy. They're all doing very well. Um, and I didn't need to have someone, you know, live with me for a month, you know, to take every, every aspect mm -hmm. of it. Um, but different cultures, you know, um, look at it differently. And uh, uh, I have to say, like I say, I see some very negative sides to a lot of the traditions. Mm. Um, and I've seen them going a bit too far, especially with not being able to step outdoors, uh, not being able to be out in the wind, not being able to watch television. All right. of these things that Chinese uh, women who are practicing the Man Yue or the slow month after birth cannot do. I see it as taking it a little bit too far. Well, you've lived in Beijing for something like 22 years, is that right? That's right. So you must have seen a lot of, a lot of things, experienced a lot of, of, um, ex of Chinese ways. Mm -hmm. I want you to expand a little bit more about this, this culture, this idea of, um, you know, we can't do this, we can do this. Mm -hmm. How do you really perceive it, these ingrained beliefs? Where do they come from? Right. Um, well, first of all, with Confucian values, the family is everything. And so you really listen to your elders in China. Now, you know, growing up in an English family, I remember when I got to about the age of 16, I really just stopped listening to my parents. <laughs> <laughs> I can relate to that, yeah. <laughs> Very much did my own thing, and then I left home at 17. Right. Um, and I never listened to my parents since then. Um, that's really not practiced in a, in, a, in a Chinese family where you really do listen to your elders. Right, and your you uncles. have that responsibility yeah, of that paying was, back. That's right. right, family is everything. Um, and so the traditions are really quite set in stone sometimes, you know, from generation to generation. Um, and so it's, um, it can be a very traditional society here in China, mm. you know. Um, and, and so very different to the West in, in, on that front. And that's why you see practices like this becoming big again, you know. It was, mm -hmm. um, you know, something in the, in the 90s in, in Beijing, you didn't really see this, you mm. know, this USR, this uh, confinement nurse. Um, but people would still practice the, the slow month. But now as society has, um, as, as there's more money now and people are more affluent, um, they can afford a nurse to come into the home and bring this whole tradition right back to life. Right, and of course if you have a lot of money, it can become quite a glamorous affair. That's right, yeah. And of course you, you can get confinement nurses who are, you know, have, who are famous ones almost, you know, mm. have worked for famous families and wealthy families and, and, um, and, and command massive salaries and come in with their, whole, with their own sets of rules and ways of doing it. Um, mm. And I'm sure from province to province, they all have their own different ways as well in China. In the case of my, my first wife, who's from Shanghai, we had our daughter in England and on the NHS, the National Health System there, the, right after the birth, they gave her a glass of cold water, which mm. uh, is something that you know, we are, um, would be really uh, seen as a silly thing to do in China, to drink cold water, especially after birth. Mm. Uh, she didn't want to drink it, but the nurses screamed at her and forced her to drink it. She right. drank it. And then she had a caesarean, which of course in China, after a caesarean, you would probably stay in bed for two weeks, um, um, or at least a week. Mm. On the NHS in England, they had her out of the bed the next day and in the shower, mm. which is something, again, you know... Completely uh, against in the what slow she's month, been told. You, in the slow month, you wouldn't even shower in the first month. Right. Um, and scrubbed her down. And on the third day... Um, she came home. She and, must have been horrified. Yeah, uh, well, she was horrified, but then she also kind of grew to it and, was re and realized, wow, this is amazing that my body is, you know, healed this quickly. Right. And, and we were out in the garden, you know, in the, on a summer's day in England um, with the baby, our daughter, outside in, in the wind and, and mm. my wife, uh, you know, reading the paper. And it was a whole new experience for her. Okay, well, speaking of the beautiful city, Beijing, uh, we took to the streets to ask people for their opinion on the whole process of confinement in China. Stay with us. Welcome back to China Insight. I've been talking to my guest Dominic Johnson-Hill about a process in China in which women stay indoors for a month following pregnancy. Would you hire a confinement nurse after giving birth? That's the question we pose to Beijingers. Have a look. Um 
多。那您看，您看怎么说了？分级别，作为我们这年代了，一万，甭说一万，一百我都请不起。在当时那年代，啊、现在年代要一万人，年轻人人要你能挣一万不算问题。我们掏的是一万一，你觉得这价格能接受吗？那不接受怎么办？哇，一般人请不起。我们那时候当时请的是就是所谓的金牌月嫂。啊Well, the last one wasn't very happy, was she? Hmm. Interesting mix there. Quite a lot of what we were just speaking about. In terms, yeah. First of all, a lot of parents now, you know, both sides are working, you know, uh, and much more than before. Um, as uh, people are so busy in this city of Beijing, and, and most couples I meet who are my age who have children both work and right. work very long hours. You mm -hmm. know, it's a very hard-working society here. Um, so even more need for really bringing in these people, you right? Know? And um, and as some of them were just saying there as well, there's no need because I've got my parents. Um, but quite often it's the case now that the parents can't come. Mm. So uh, they might live in a completely different province. Or yeah, or they or the uh, the home is too small, um, mm. or they don't want to travel up. Um, they're too old, so uh, they don't have their parents on hand because you know Beijing's a, a city made of of, of migrants. So. Uh, mm. you know, People dotted from all over the country, and their parents are having to come from quite far. Mm. So yeah, um, it, it's interesting, and interesting. Some of the the salaries they're talking about there as well. No, ten thousand RMB. That's a lot of money. It's a lot of money to cough yeah. up, isn't it? Yeah, 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 it's a lot, and you can see why it's a booming industry. Um, but yeah, I, I, myself, I wouldn't be up for it. Right. Um, definitely wouldn't be up for it. But. It's interesting to see the market growing. And it is. It's good it to is. see that uh, there's going to be some standards on it as well. Yeah, and speaking of, um, I mean, you're a father. Speaking mm. of, you know, both parents working. I wonder if, you know, while we're talking about, you know, the the month after childbirth, I wonder if if you're a kind of an advocate of paternity leave. You know, in other countries, fathers might have a month or two off. Mm. Whether that would also help in the in the process, they could be the confinement nurse yeah. in some ways. Right. You know. I, I, I've been at the receiving hand of this um, in, with my first daughter, you know, I took um, a, a long time, or I took two years out of work um, to, to hang out with her. Mm. And it was one of the best two years of my life. Um, and such an important time to bond with your child. Um, and then with another daughter, I hardly took any time off at all. Um, uh, but we had a, a wonderful Beijing uh, helper who looked after our children. I, I think that men should definitely be given paternity leave. I think that, you know, in the traditional senses, the man, you know, is the provider and, you know, the woman, the wife gives birth and you just get straight back to work. Um, and then you lose out on a lot of that time to understand, first of all, your child's needs and, and have that bonding with them mm. in the first month. And now, of course, in the first month, it, babies don't do an awful lot. Right. Um, but it's a great time to learn about Formative them. time, they yeah, do say. It's, it's yeah. A really, yeah, it's a very formative time. So, uh, I'm a, you know, I'm a big advocate for it. Thank you very much for joining us. Thanks for having me, Britt. If you have any comments or questions, please email us at chinainsight at cctv.com or you can find us on Facebook, Weibo and WeChat. And we'll see you next time for more stories and discussion on China out of China. Goodbye.